Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint a watercolor of a windowsill with a couple boxes of geraniums on top. I love the texture and the background and the bright colors of the flowers, and I thought it would be super fun to paint in watercolors. I'm beginning by sketching on the scene with my watercolor pencils. I'm using my Prima watercolor pencils because that's what I happen to have on my table, and I'll put a link below in the video description to those if you're curious because they're a very affordable, high quality pencil that um, I recommend because I use them myself. I'm using some green here to sketch on the flower boxes, and I'm using some gray to get the uh, details of the shutters in. I don't need to put too many details in, but I want to know where everything's going to be so when I start painting, I can leave some areas unpainted. Now I sped up the video because I was having a problem uploading the uh, larger files and I'm going to try to come up with a solution. If anybody's interested in seeing the um, the longer full tutorial, this is a, a full tutorial, it's just sped up. If anybody wants like the 60 minute version, just let me know and I will try to get a, um, try to edit it so I can put it up online. It was just giving me a lot of trouble today. I'm beginning by wetting the background, which is everything that would be like the background wall, the stucco and the brick, if you recall from the first pictures. And um, don't worry about any of your watercolor pencil lines dissolving in, they'll disappear, that's not a worry. I'm gonna start by using some yellow ochre, which is that kind of um, earthy yellow, and I'm just painting it directly onto my wet paper. I'm using Arches 140 pound cold press paper, if you're curious. Now I'm adding in some burnt sienna, which is that reddish brown, and just letting them mix together on the wet paper. If you have a problem with your colors flowing, it may be because you're using student quality paints and you might need a little more water. If you're using artist quality paints and they're not flowing, you need you just need more water for sure. I added a little bit of ultramarine blue into the burnt sienna to make that nice gray. I like to keep using the same colors over and over that I'm going to use in my painting because it makes the painting harmonious. Now I'm adding some more of that blue in there just to kind of give me a cooler um, color on the background wall. And I like that variation in color because I think that it just adds a lot of interest and will help with the texture when we go to paint that later. I'm adding in some gray that is much more blue biased here into the cool shadow area because I want it to feel um, more pushed back and cooler and in the shade because this is a nice, bright, summer, summery, sunny scene. To add a little texture, I am using a paper towel that I've crumpled up to press into the wet paint and that's going to lift off uh, some of the color. Now I'm painting the glass in the window. I'm just wetting it with clear water. And then I'm going to drip in some of that blue-gray mix that we made with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. We're going to keep repeating those colors so it will make sure our painting will be nice and pleasant and harmonious. I apologize for the glare up there in the uh, corner. I white balanced my camera and it c tends to uh, not always be the most accurate. Now I'm just uh, watching the paint blend together and letting it do its thing pretty much. Now I'm adding some burnt sienna in a little more ultramarine blue there, a little stronger. And I'm gonna use that for the shadows on my uh, shutters around the window. You have really strong highlights and shadows because it's kind of like a midday coloring, a midday um, scene. So got some really, really strong light there. I wanted to make sure I got those shadows in. I wanted to add some texture into the shutters, so I grabbed a fan brush, which is technically, or typically, I should say, a tool that oil painters and acrylic painters usually use, and I'm putting it in some really wet, strong colored paint, and I'm just dragging it across my shutter area of my painting to kind of give it the look of weathered wood. Now, it doesn't look like weathered wood yet, but when we wash over it with some other colors, it's gonna weaken those dark lines and just give it that nice weathered texture that will look really nice. I think the, the theme of this painting is learning how to do textures. So if you don't know how to do that, I think it'll be a really good practice for you. So now I'm mixing up a um, little bit of kind of like an earthy uh, brown color with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm adding in a little bit of the red that we're going to use for the flowers. And I'm adding that into the, um, the windowsill itself, which is kind of, it looks like it's made of like a stone. So I'm putting that in for kind of my shadows and the textural details. And the reason I'm using this instead of a really strong color is because I know I'll be able to paint my flowers and foliage on top without it really standing out. So I'm, I like to put the details in first in my deepest value and then wash over it with the lighter colors. Um, that works for me. Some people like to go light to dark, 
it's all in whatever works best for you. I find that I have no problem being bold at the beginning of a painting with the darks, but if I wait, then sometimes it's harder to, uh, to be bold. And then you can adjust your color just by pressing a wet paper towel on it. I've let my painting dry so far, and you can see how the background has shifted a little bit lighter. And now I am using a uh, number four round to paint some cracks in the uh, stucco walls in the background. By pressing and twisting my brush, I can get some thick and thin lines, which look naturally like the cracks you would find in an old wall. Also, I find that blotting my, um, my lines every once in a while with a paper towel keeps it from looking too uniform. And you can see the different um, tones in the background. You can kind of use that to guide you as, f as to where you want to put bricks and rocks and pits and cracks in the walls. Go with whatever your picture is looking like. If you see a shape that looks like it could be a brick or a stone, then make it a stone. I mean, this is completely up to you. Um, I am using my using that reference photo very loosely at this point. I'm kind of uh, kind of doing my own thing, but it's nice to have that safety net of a of that photograph to work from. Now I have painted some watercolor right onto my sponge. This is just a a sponge, natural sea sponge for painting, but you could use a kitchen sponge. Just maybe tear it up a bit so it's uniform. And and I painted on the gray and now and then just stamped it across the uh, more cooler color of the surface and then I rinsed my sponge off and wrung it out and now I'm doing the same with the golden color which is the burnt sienna yellow ochre and um, pink and I'm going a little I'm getting a little carried away here it reminds me of my first sponge painting techniques on a wall and I realized it was too bold or uniform or something. So I've wet out that on the right hand side of the painting and lifted it off and I'm adding in a little more shadow because um, I felt like it was a little bit too textured over there. So you know you can edit and touch up as you go through your picture. Um, I'm doing the kind of the same thing over here on the left side too. I want some of the texture but I had to tone it down because it just looked like a, a bad 90s um, faux finish to me. You remember when everything was the rage back in the 90s and we like marbleized everything? That's what it was reminding me of and I had to make it stop. It was it was a little too much. But I'm starting to like the texture that I have back there now. All right, so I decided I'd go in and paint the foliage before I painted the window box because I wanted to make sure that I left room for it because the foliage was gonna be lighter and airier and I wanted to make sure it kept that lightness and I didn't have to like scrub up too much of the um, underpainting. So I'm just using a big brush just to slap on that foliage color. I like to work with my larger brushes first and then um, go smaller as needed. And I've switched to a round brush that's probably like a number eight or 10, I can't remember exactly. Um, pretty thirsty brush that holds a lot of paint. And I'm just dabbing in the, uh, the leaves and also just making some loose uh, stems. At this point, I'm not really interested in painting individual leaves. I'm just getting the shapes kind of cordoned off. So when I go in to paint the flower box and the flowers, um, I've kind of already allocated space for the flowers, I mean, for the leaves. Now I'm taking some of that gray, which as you recall was a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine and I'm painting in just some chunks of color on the shutters because old wood will tend to have some warm looking spots, some cool looking spots, but it's very rustic and ununiform and that's what I want to get. And then I'm filling in some of the other spots with some washy um, burnt sienna and yellow ochre. You don't want to have everything all uniform in one color or it's not going to look old and weathered and we really want the old and weathered look here. At this point I'm pretty much just blocking in any areas that have no paint. I'm putting the uh, window panes though like the wood part that holds the glass in. I don't know what that's called. Casings I guess. I'm putting that in there with some burnt sienna and probably a little touch of that pink to warm it up a little bit more and um, just basically filling in. I am going to be careful to make sure I have room to paint my my pink geraniums, my reddish pinkish geraniums, uh, because I want to make sure that they're super bright and um, bright and light looking. You know what I mean? Like they're, I want them to look delicate. I don't want them to look too heavy. Like I had to paint them really thickly to make them stand out. Now I'm using the edge of my brush, of my big flat brush, to define the edges of the window shutters and the little panes between the boards, or the little gaps between the boards, I should say. And I still have that paper towel in my hand because it's really easy to lift off these sedimentary colors while they're still wet. So kind of adjust as you go. 
Now there's um, a couple little like rusty latches um, on either side of the shutters, those little rectangles there. And so I'm just kind of outlining them a little bit, making them a little more defined so I can go back in and paint them later. I'm also dabbing on some little nail holes and knots and things like that in the wood just to add to the texture and the rustic feel of everything. My paper's still a little bit damp here, so any of the little nail heads I put in there are gonna um, blend a little bit. They're, not, they're gonna have soft edges, which is fine because then they'll kind of look like the holes that the nails were in rather than the nail heads themselves. But if you want, you can let your painting dry or you can dry it with a hair dryer in between any of these steps. Just remember, wet paper, your paint's gonna blend. Dry paper, you're gonna have crisp lines. So generally, as I'm working, um, my paper's wet when I begin and I let it get drier. Um, as I progress. So I start with big brushes and wet paper and then I go with smaller brushes and drier paper as I proceed. So to make this super dark green I'm using, I am taking um, ultramarine blue and that sap green and just a little touch of the red, which is the red I'm using for my flowers and the red that I've used already is kind of like a um, quinacridone rose, I believe. Any sort of like pinky red will be fine though. But you can see how it makes a really rich dark green and that's what I'm going for here in the window box. Um, you can have it a little lighter if you want. It's completely up to you, but you want to have some contrast between your leaves and the window box. You could even have it a wooden window box if you want to. That's a great thing about your painting. You can paint it however you like. And I just added a little bit of a ridge on the bottom of the window box um, just for drainage, I guess. You know how a lot of times you have that little trace so all the stuff doesn't fall through? Now my top window box, I made it a little bit more blue-green um, just to, I, I guess, give it a little bit of a, a variation from the other one. I'm painting around the little bits of foliage that I had cascading down in front of the box. Um, I kind of wish I left a little bit more um, you know, space for foliage, but I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. And you can always be a um, an armchair quarterback when you look at it the next, or Monday morning quarterback, what do you call that, when you judge something after you do it? I don't know. But, you know, after you, um, after you look at something, sometimes you realize, oh, it would have been better if I did this. I probably could lift up the paint if I wanted to go back in um, and add more spaces for foliage, but um, but I'm more of a go forward type of gal. I'm using a, a quill style brush, which is like a really fat, um, thirsty brush to dab in some of the uh, rose color. And I'm kind of letting the shape of my brush make the petals and really, that's pretty much it. I'm not fussing with it too much. And you can see how well that color stands up against the uh, background of earth tones and um, across the, um, like above the green, it looks super vibrant because green's a complementary color, so it makes it look really vibrant. And it's also standing up against the uh, windowsill color because remember we purposely used that yellow ochre and um, browns and pinks just so that it would be um, there would be that contrast there. Here's a look at my palette. I decided to make a nice dark shade for my flowers and I'm using the rose red or quinacridone rose. I'm using a little bit of green, a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. We're still using the same colors. I'll put a list in the video description in case you um, in case you forget and you just want to lay out those colors. And um, I'm using a combination of those three to make my uh, shadows in the flowers. You basically just need some contrast. I think actually Contrast and value is a little bit more important than getting the color exactly right. But you're not going to have a problem with your colors if you stick to a limited palette and keep mixing from those same colors. And I kept thinking that my green looks pretty bright here, so I guess it's all right. But I was thinking maybe um, adding a lemon yellow to my palette would have made my foliage even more vibrant and fresh looking. But now that I look at it, again, um, Monday morning quarterback here, I'm thinking that the green's probably bright enough. Um, but it's just one of those things that, you know, the more you paint, the more you're going to learn about color theory. I've gone back to my little round brush and added a few stems uh, from the geraniums in the bottom. I wanted it to kind of spread across and, you know, really look like nature is just breaking free of that box and um, really, you know, make it look lively and summery. And I'm dabbing on some more fresh green um, leaves 
and you know I'm not really paying attention to what a geranium leaf looks like I'm just you know looking at my painting and deciding what I think my painting ought to have and that's kind of how I like to paint um, if you are really into capturing the details of a flower you'll want to paint a little differently but I just thought this would be a really fun exercise for you guys today on uh, doing texture and um, getting some nice bright fun summery colors in there now for details on the leaves, all I'm doing is taking that round brush, that number four round, and some juicy sap green and just kind of uh, scribbling in some details. You can add a little bit of ultramarine to it to give it like a cool shadow and um, scribble it in there. Now I'm taking some of my uh, burnt sienna and I'm defining the lines on the windowsill. I had a little problem with my perspective there and I decided I would just kind of go with how I drew it even though that's not how the picture is because it would have been really awkward if I tried to fix it. Now I'm going to use some Brusho powdered pigment paint which is a type of watercolor but it's it's like a powdered pigment. It's super vivid and I've sprinkled it into some of the flower areas and now I'm using a tiny mister just to squirt some water on those areas where I um, where I shook the powder on and it was kind of a leap of faith. I was a little afraid to do it, but I had played with them for the first time yesterday and I really enjoyed them. And I just thought that that looseness would look really good in this picture. Um, I'm kind of an impulsive person. So if you don't like this, if you're afraid of messing it up, you can see how the colors just kind of whoosh and bloom out like that. It may not be the best um, idea for you, but you can see when I just spray the clear water over that brush oil pigment, it just like is just this burst of color, which I think is um, spontaneous and exciting. And uh, you can see right there in a little bit of a close up. And also in the photos at the end of the video, you'll be able to see kind of how it looked. Now for the hinges, the rusty latches or hinges or whatever the heck they are, I've uh, painted them with kind of this, this light mixed gray from my palette. And then, um, and again, that was gray we made, not a gray from a bottle. And then I dripped in direct burnt sienna and direct ultra, um, ultramarine and direct uh, yellow ochre. And I'm letting those colors mix. And then you'll get that really nice oxidized rust look when it dries. I'm also adding a little bit more of ultramarine blue with a little burnt sienna in it into the glass in the windows to kind of give it a little bit of um, make it look like there's kind of curtains in the shade in the shadows behind the glass um, it's you know you'll see it better in the photos at the end because my white balance was kind of washing that area out now it's just time to add some refining details um, so this painting is at about I'd say about 45, 50 minutes now. I am using the gray that we made with Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine and I'm just defining in between the boards and the shutters. And I am also dotting on little nails inside the little pits that we made when we painted the nail heads onto the uh, wet paper. So it's just, you know, and as we go, like I said, my brushes get smaller and my paper gets drier and I get more defined. And that's how I like to work. I think it keeps you from getting too wound up in the details. It helps you look at the big picture and it helps you make an all over pleasing painting instead of like working on one tiny little spot and getting it perfect and realizing that it's completely out of whack with everything else you've made. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I see children do that a lot. They start drawing one area of maybe a Disney character really detailed and then they've run out of room on their paper or when they start to draw the next thing it's out of proportion with the first thing that they drew so that's why it's great to kind of attack a painting at once loosely all together and then start refining as you go it's a lot less stressful and enjoy more enjoyable I think anyway and I'm adding a few more shadows in the flowers because before when we were painting it they were wetter and then I went over with that brush oil pigment um, powder and that kind of also gave me some loose shapes that I thought I needed to refine a little bit. But that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Now, I know I needed a little bit more uh, shadow and I started to sign my name and then realized, you know what? I really, I really would like to have a little more shadow on the uh, right side of that painting. It's a little off balance, I thought. So I'm going back in and just wetting that area. Um, around that shutter and I'm dripping in my gray mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and just kind of letting it flow. There's a little glare there. I apologize. You'll be able to see it a little bit better in the still shots in a second, but I'm just pretty much adding the paint to that edge where I want it darkest and letting it blend out on its own. Try not to force it and fuss with it too much and it will, it'll look great. Trust me. I'm going to uh, tip it so that my paint just kind of gravity helps it feed down. 
and it really gives it a nice natural look. I'm going to do the same thing under the window box a little bit because I feel like there's not enough shadow for how big that plant is. And sometimes you just have to take a break and look at it and realize that. And I probably should have waited to sign my name, but um, <laughs> but I was thought that would be the end of the video. And I was wrong, of course, as usual. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for checking this out today. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, let me know if you like these sped up videos or if you would like the 60 minute version because I can see if I can get my computer to behave and render that out so I can upload that as well if anybody's interested. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.